Uh, first of all, thank you for the lunch and the hospitality I received here at your town and in your conference. Uh, my name is Anders Lespers and I'm from WSP. We are an engineering and consulting company, uh, worldwide spread. I'll talk a little bit about it later. <clears throat> One essential part of BIM is to communicate. And uh, you can communicate in different ways. One is with video. You want to show your project or you want to show your company. In this uh, video we show the company. Uh, this is a type of uh, videos that is produced from my little team. Um, I represent WSP here. We are a global company. We are worldwide spread and we are quite a lot of employees and, and colleagues in, in the company right now. But our uh, department is uh, 25 people in Sweden. That's where we are. It's called visualization and VR, and that's not really true. We do that, and we do the other things that you can see uh, down in the menu, if you call it like that. So we work a lot with BIM coordination and also with VDC implementation and, and to manage that type of, of meetings. We also do virtual reality models. I will show you in the end of the presentation live, hopefully, you can say. Uh, something that we are working with uh, right today. I will share with you a little bit about what we at VSP, how we look into the question that are facing us when we start talking about BIM and about getting better and smarter and everything. Uh, from our top management, uh, they put up four lines for us to cover. And uh, it's uh, about our urbanization, about the cities growing much more. Uh, we have a lot of information in a, in a smaller area, and we have to manage that. That is different besides being out in the landscape doing roads where there is no houses and no people. So we have to manage a lot of information. That is for BIM. We have a globalization where we have different players coming into countries. Uh, we, we cut the borders and we, we go for tenders in completely different countries where we have to compete with others. And also there we need to be uh, better in what we are doing and have a, um, an advantage in what we are doing. We see a consolidation. Our company is a perfect example where big companies buying other big companies and getting even bigger. But the back end of that is also that we have to make the profit. We have to work smarter, do things much better. And in the end, as we already have seen, the word big data, uh, for us, there will be enormous amount of data coming into our uh, availability so we can reach it. But the thing is, how do we select it? How, do we, how are we smart enough to use all that information? Uh, Autodesk made this. Uh, I don't know the value of it really. I have the picture here. How mature are we? Uh, we have a high, medium and low. Uh, I think this is very dependent. Of course it can be for countries, but it's also for companies. We have to look into companies. If, are you good or are you bad? We can see that in Sweden. Someone are on the top edge. Someone have not even started with this. So, but anyhow, we are in different levels, and uh, we had a discussion here over lunch where we said, you could see I'm from the civil side, that you are in civil, you are 10 years ahead from the building side. Maybe today, but we are catching up a lot, I can promise that to you. Um, BIM can be how complex as you wish it to be. And you can look into it like uh, Mount Everest. How can I even come up to that top of the thing? Uh, I tr always try to make this much easier. Think of it like uh, what you want to see. And I have five, five points. I keep to them. And I say, OK, let's do something in every one of this. And maybe we are moving ahead towards what, what is the end result that no one really know. But we want to be better. First of all, we have to have an intelligent 3D model. 
first of all, maybe you want to have a 3D model. That's a good start with everything. But then you can add more and more data when you start learning doing this. At our company, we, we try to, to do 3D modeling, at least push it into the project piece by piece. And that is uh, a way for us to, to make things happen out in the organization. We have a thousand engineers that we cannot say, now we're going to go for BIM. And they say, uh, what, what's in it for me? It's also a normal answer. Uh, all domains should be included. It's very easy to, to look into a road design. Yes, of course, it should be there. Maybe water and sewer. Yes. Um, then you move over to a rail project, and you talk uh, talking about electrical signal, telecommunication, and they say, we are 2D. Don't come to us. But the thing is, they put their cables in some construction besides the rail that can influence on a water sewer uh, drawings and everything. So they also have to be a part of everything. All phases should be included. We talk about design, about construction, about maintenance. Maintenance is, in my belief, quite far away right now. Uh, at least in Sweden, where, where I come from. We have to do a lot of things there, but it's very common that we have connections between design and machinery control, for instance. Um, so things are happening. You also, of course, need this documented work process implemented. How shall we do that? You can make uh, books about this, and no one has a possibility to read everything. You have to take it, again, step by step into the organization. And then also in presentation before me, we talked about standards. We drive this with standards a lot further on. Transport Authority. Uh, Kurt Lovnes was talking a little bit about it, but this is the way it is in, in uh, Sweden. Lowest level, that's the only thing you need to see here. That's the demand in projects starting this year. They want to be up here in, in what we can call 3D directly. That pushes us. Before it was a, a wish, now it's a demand, and that's a huge difference. Uh, here we've got a lot of things. The only thing you need to bother about is building smart and OGC, that we talk about geographical data and also what you call uh, design data in one in a combination, and the Trafikverket, who is road and rail authority in Sweden, they are very active here now. Before this year, they were a passive member. Now they are an active member. Uh, we think that is really good. The procurement process <coughs> also changes a lot into turnkey projects. And for us at VSP that have communicated with the authority, that's what we have done. Suddenly we need to communicate with the entrepreneur because they got the, the tenders that they're going to bring in to tra traffic work at the authority. So this was the situation before. The authority bought engineering companies and then they bought entrepreneur and then they hold the project a little bit by themselves. Now we're changing, and the idea is in 2016, 40% of the projects from the authority will go as turnkey projects. So we have to learn living with the entrepreneurs, the construction company, and they know what they want, and they're really asking about it. Digital data for having the machine going 24 hours a day, but not really, but close to uh, I have some pictures also from Norway. Who have ever measured the value of BIM? They've done it in the building industry. Uh, I don't have that here. But uh, in Norway, it's the first time I've seen someone who has done some measurement. Do we earn something on this? Uh, so they have done an analyze of uh, six projects. I only have two here, just an, uh, as an example. So if we Look in what triggers, for instance, change orders. This was wrong. We need to redesign and come back and build again. The machine have to stop or we have to move it to somewhere else. 
There's a long list of things that can go really wrong, but if you look into the first, errors in design, that is very close to WSB. Um, as I mentioned, there's a project where they're looking into a traditional delivery with drawings, just like we do today, normally, and the other one with a 3D model and a collaboration meeting and VDC and everything. Uh, this is a central project inside the capital of Oslo in Norway. And you can see this is a traditional, the contract sum in Norwegian crowns, let's say 30 million euros or something. But they have uh, extra orders, extra numbers on the project for nearly 20%. That is quite a lot. Um, when they looked into what, what went so wrong, if you can say like that, 44% of that was error in design. That was, we haven't understood or we have bad existing situation or whatever. Uh, this is a traditional project. If we look into what they have developed a lot in, in Norway is to work in collaboration, 3D models. Everybody delivers into the model all the time and that's where they do the checking if everything is suited in any time. Then the number goes down to under 10 and that was the target for the authority in Norway. We need to go under 10 on all projects. Uh, so you can see this is a higher volume, but the extra cost is, is uh, uh, something completely different. And if you look into this, this was 44% in the other type of project. So it's a lot of money to earn here, but the question is, who got the money? That you need to discuss as well. Um, okay, uh, WSP uh, and BIM. Uh, we have an agenda that we work with. We have had it for many years. We've been very on the top, trying to push it down to the organization. Uh, one way of doing it is that we have standardized on software from Bentley and Autodesk. We have a lot of other. We have gone from 350 different softwares to 200 something in civil area. It's still a lot, but it's, uh, it's better and we do this because we want the software to communicate with each other. So, um, all new project at a certain level uh, includes also a BIM model in a virtual reality environment. And this, we have done this, we have maybe done I think six or seven hundred projects, uh, if I include all the small ones over the last ten years. But it had never been like, uh, of course, this shall be in our project. Something has happened in the, in the end of last year and starting of this year, so more or less we, we do this as a standard in all projects. It's uh, established and we do it. This is what I'm going to show you soon. As I mentioned with the, with the different procurement that we have, a closer relation with entrepreneurs, we also, they absolutely ask for machinery control data. They really want that. And if they don't get it, they start designing uh, the project again, doing it uh, a redesign, and that is not good. So they so should have that from us. BDC and ICE rooms, um, not sure if you know what it is, but it, it is very, special meetings room with a lot of projectors, uh, good environment where you can lock in a project for two or three days. All project members, no one are allowed to, to leave just for eating and sleeping, of course. But that is for concentrating on the project and getting all the small stuff in place instead of sending a mail and getting an answer five days later. Uh, that shrinks the time of the project a lot. And if you go and look into an entrepreneur, you will find the same thing, the same answer. He's doing the same thing as we do. And they have more control of the market today. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that, that, but than we have if we talk about those issues about digital uh, management around this. So finally, I'm going to do a short demo of a project. It's in Gothenburg, 
second city in, in uh, Sweden. The project is called Westlänken. Today we pay extra money to go into city to finance this. Uh, we are all happy that live there. So <laughs> it's a two-track railway, eight kilometers under the city. It's a three billion euro project, so it's quite huge for a city. It's the size of Vilnius, something like that. You can, you can say that. Uh, the backbone data, because there are a lot of consultants from different companies, not just WSP, it's Sverko, it's Reinertsen, it's a lot of companies. They are pushing in data into ProjectWise, Bentley ProjectWise, as a document management. There can be drawings, there can be model files, there can be documents from your technical researches and everything. And we then have a process that scans this database and extract data that we need to have in the virtual model because that is what is seen by a lot of people. The virtual model is used for project co collaboration and very, a lot for communication with the society, with every people who lives in the city because this is a huge project. So, hold your thumbs. Uh, this is like this. This is uh, Gothenburg. Uh, and if we go up, we can see some red lines here. It's a central part of Gothenburg. The red line is a corridor for this railway over here. It's an old station. It's what we call uh, in Swedish, sextakon. I don't know English word. Train comes in, trains go out the same way. With this, the train comes in and the train goes to the south of Sweden without going back again. So it's a, it's a way of simplifying things. It's quite difficult to see that we have something uh, special here, but if I change the uh, transparency, you can see that there is something going on here and we have uh, the, the trail, the rail thing uh, going away here. It's a quite a huge project as I saw 1.2 terabyte is the backbone data. This model is only 19 gigabyte, but it's still very, very big. So, and you can always go back and see, okay, here is the city, what can I see here? And if we go further on, this is, an, you can see here we have old houses still here. We're gonna probably get rid of them. We have a new station, uh, um, area here where you can go down in. This is uh, done in Revit. There's a lot of different uh, uh, software involved. Um, I, don't, I don't know the number, but, but here you have a station area for Central Station, it's called. You can also go in here and here you have uh, installations of uh, all type. Uh, I think I can do like this. Maybe you cannot see it, but you can always look into what drawing or DWG file or a Bentley, uh, I don't remember what it is, does this come from? So you can go back to the original all the time. Otherwise you will be lost, okay, where was this? Um, so you can also see a good chunk, this is uh, clarified, the, the place is um, where it should be. It's an AutoCAD drawing, it's following uh, Sphere F99 as a EUREF system, uh, and so on. So you can always bring out more information from, from uh, the model. Okay. Uh, in this type of model, we also include symbol build, uh, buildings, like uh, this is uh, done by the architect Erskins, it's in the central part. Um, should move on here. We do like this. And if we follow, you can see things are green here. It's a beton tunnel. That is, uh, means that we have mud here. So we have, uh, have to do a construction for the tunnel. So green means uh, that we are in that situation. Uh, this is red means that we have a rock tunnel. And here you can see we have uh, all things from the past. This is probably a parking garage today but it was uh, to cover from, from the war when the bombs came. Uh, 
but we have to manage this as well and if you look into this is uh, it's not uh, much place to to work around with um, finally I'm gonna go to this place or, uh, this looks good no problem here uh, if you live here this is your neighborhood today and then you go to a meeting and say we're gonna build this in your area then people got angry I can promise you they got really angry uh, so they use this model for all meetings with the, the people in the city so they go around here they explain you will not see much here this this uh, yellow is also a tunnel that is the tunnel uh, work tunnel when they're building this so the people who is living above will will not see more or less nothing they maybe will feel things under their feet but uh, but that's all um, I know my time is I got one minute hmm. so we go <coughs> over here and here is also uh, another place central place in uh, in um, Gothenburg it's called Koshwagen it's a crossing with uh, I say everything is here besides we don't have airplanes and we don't have boats otherwise we have all types of traffic uh, like uh, trams, cars, buses, cycles, peoples, walking and so on. And here will also this um, station come, quite a huge one as well. And then you can go in and you can look into to, um, uh, a lot of other information that should do like this. Um, if we look in for Fakasta uh, Förslag, or translate that, that is a uh, solution that we have reacted, so they are out of the, of the area. But we still want to keep them to know, okay, what was it? Okay, that was that. So in the model, we always keep what suggestion we had before. So that's why the model also grow a lot. Um, um, Moving on further on. Um, yep. I stop there with this one. Uh, we also have all these geotechnical things in this. You have the, um, uh, re the research areas and should, of course, have that here. So this is PDFs from uh, research of geotechnical research. You can always go in and have all those documents. They are also a part of the, doc of the model. So you, you can bring out PDFs, whatever that's included in this. So um, that's my presentation, a little bit about what we are doing in WSP and what we are doing in Sweden in particular. Thank you very much.